All right, everyone. Hey, this is Lada. Um, I am waiting on Angel to show in. Uh, it says share my screen. We don't want to share screen just yet. I don't think so. So like I said, um, having a lot of these, uh, I don't know what's going on with Facebook and even with Apple. Um, they just got a lot of new stuff going on and it's just weird and crazy here all at the same time. But we're waiting on uh, Angel to come in to the room. I'm going to message her as well because we were actually supposed to do this off Zoom, but it is not working. So if you are new to the group, if you are um, new to the group, new to dispatching, wanting to know more about dispatching, please stay tuned, ask your questions. This session is here for you. Um, if you would, as you're coming in and viewing, just say hello so I can check the comments. Um, like I said, this is a new video format for us and just want to make sure it's effective. It's really the best way to get this still out into the group. Um, it looks like Facebook, again, is doing a lot of um, changes to where they're allowing certain things to go through. They're changing other things um, up. If you are an Apple user, you may have seen the Apple event. My, my kid's a techie, and so um, he's all things uh, Apple, Team Apple, really. Um, and they had a big event, and if you're not aware, Apple and um, Facebook are not the best of friends because of privacy. Hey, Angel. Hey, can you hear me? I can, I can. Uh, and thank you, everyone. Dorothy, thank you. Junkista, and if I'm saying that wrong, please correct me. Myrtle, thank you. So again, as you are coming in, if you'll just say hello so we can check the comments. Um, I was just explaining to everyone that between Zoom and Facebook and even some stuff on my phone, I feel like everything's being tweaked and turned and changed, and it just throws you all off when you have to learn technology um, to fix it, you know, just when you think things are good. But um, I wanted to make sure we're fully in the group, and again, as people are coming in, if you would just kindly say hello so we can look at comments. But one thing I do give credit to this format is you're able to see the comments as well, are you not? Who, me? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I think I got them. Okay, awesome. If not, I, I can repeat them. I have no problems, issues in that. So I am going to go ahead and really, I'm trying to move my little window out of the way. And yet again, I just made it disappear. Yeah, this thing here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will get used to it. Uh, all right, full screen for me. So full screen. So, Lada, uh, I got a question. Yes. How do we share, how do I share this on my end to my timeline? That's part of all this little workaround stuff we're trying to figure. So, it, once this video downloads or once it finishes or whatever, it'll give you like an option to download the video. So, you could do it that way. Um, you know, the group is a public group, so you should be able to share. So, from where we are right now, you can share if you like to your networks. Okay, cool beans. Sounds All good. right. Now the only other issue I kind of seen on here is, um, and I'm not sure if it was just doing it to me or not, but it'll kick you off. Um, okay, so it's got a little tab here of watching it together. Not quite sure what that is because that's about to change too. They're taking off watch parties. But Angel, I am going to let you just take it from here if you'll introduce who you are. You can just stick it in here. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. How y'all doing? Good. Look, I was having some sound check issues this morning, but it's a blessing to be here. I just want you, I just want to put that out there first. It is indeed a blessing to be in the land of living, uh, despite yes. everything that's going on in, in this country across the world. Um, I am Angel Lovelace. I have over. 15 years of experience in transportation, logistics, um, and it's been a journey. 
uh, I can say this, um, trust the process, trust the process. And I, I want to start with this story. In 2015, I uh, leased a truck as a, a lease purchase driver. And I leased that truck in 2015, November of 2015. Guess what? I took that truck back in January of 2016. And I fell into a depression. The one thing, it, it was so easy to fall into depression because it was like, oh, my dream, it, it just flopped, you know? Um, and it was scary because it was like, God, I pray for this, you know? And I, I figured I had got my blessing and everything was good, you know? Um, so I went through about two weeks of depression and then something kicked, something clicked for me. And it was pretty much, Angel, take accountability. What did you learn from it? And how do you implement the process? Immediately, once my perception changed, instead of feeling bad about what appeared to be a failure, the moment I changed my perception, God began to open doors. That's mm -hmm. the moment that I met my mentor who taught me to broker freight. That's the moment that I became a, a fleet manager for a truck of uh, 10 trucks. Uh, after that, I went ahead and bought my first truck, started my own authority, had owner operators coming on under my authority and all of that. When I tell you guys, trust the process, it, perception is everything, you know, perception is everything. So I just want to start with that story because like I said, in 2015, I thought I had completely flopped and failed, but God saw fit to, to turn it around and make it for my good. However, it does start with your mental process and it starts with your perception of everything. So uh, hopefully that was a brief description of, you know, how long I've been in the business. I have the world's perception, Angel failed, But to me, that was God's way of leading me to be in the position that I am in today, which uh, I run a full scale dispatching company, consulting company. Matter of fact, I just uh, helped a guy save over about $60,000 with uh, purchasing a, an already established company. Um, just, just with him calling and consulting with me, giving me all the information and me doing research, he saved over 60,000 in his purchase because uh, the consultation allowed him to go into negotiations, uh, being able to make informed decisions. You mm -hmm. know, when you have data and research, you can leverage that information to your benefit. So, and, and that was one of the, uh, that was a great accomplishment for me. When he called me excited, it was like, oh, wow. I did that. You know, so went all around. That's yeah. awesome. And thank you for sharing that story. And you guys, uh, if you haven't noticed already, she is one of the best storytellers out there. I love the way you tell your stories. Your stories, you know, are definitely relatable. And it, it makes us think, wow, you know, I do need to change my mindset. A lot of my limitations that I want to blame the next person or event or thing is really falling back on me. You know, Absolutely. I'm the one that thought small. I'm the one that just, you know, gave up because, you know, I've been doing it and it doesn't look the way I wanted it to look. Come and on, I'm just not giving, you know, giving myself or the opportunity, the true time for it to really come back around. And that's really um, been very similar to my story, too. I've, I've done a bunch of things along my life. And uh, one of the things that really kind of came out is, you know, as you're out there putting your name and kind of, you know, networking and stuff and you get discouraged and between, you know, doing this on a part time basis, you put it off and, you know, you start focusing on, you know, your job or some other things come up as things do. And then someone in need comes and asks you, hey, do you still do this? And now you're you have to face that humility of, you know what, not as I should be. I wasn't diligent in staying consistent with it. Um, I may or may not have some of those resources to make it happen. So, you know, regretfully, no. But even if you start off small and you just keep being consistent in it, you know, you want to be able to say yes. And you want to have that long-term um, mentality in it. A lot of times, especially in insurance, you know, when people are looking for insurance and I'm talking to them, that might not be the place or time. They may have just purchased it. And so I'm just telling them now with confidence, I'll catch you next year. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, right. because I'm, I'm going to be around. I'm going to be around and, and still doing this. So let's kind of talk a little bit more 
one of the reasons I really felt it was important and also honored just that you took this invitation to talk to our group is because what trucker the trucker's assistant does really well is have that depth of knowledge in how else can you best support your carriers. So I know, you know, you mentioned it being an experience thing, but what are some tips for someone who is thinking about this that they need to consider on if dispatching may be a right avenue for them? Study. Study. When I tell you guys I study the market and there are so many free resources. I'm going to give you out one free resource that served me well. Uh, DAT trend lines. Um, I studied the market day in and day out. Even as a company driver, I studied every day. I watched fuel prices. When you're just driving around the city in your car, pay attention to fuel prices. Uh, Download some fuel apps. Uh, Fuel book is one of them. That way you can be aware of what fuel is costing in uh, certain areas or along the route uh, that your driver is traveling. Um, If you already have a low board subscription, study the lanes. You know, uh, if you're able to go in, type in from point A, uh, origin to destination, go ahead and get that, you know, study every day. That, That is, honestly, this is not a get rich quick thing. This is a it you have to put the work in dispatching does not success does not come overnight in dispatching and if it does i'm here to tell you you will have to start over if you if you get a hundred clients in one day it's without a solid foundation you can expect to crumble that's just like the three little pigs right Mm -hmm. you know only the solid foundation will last so I, i don't you know i don't tell anyone that you know it it's um it's one of those things where you can do it and become successful. You got to put the work in. You got to put the study hours in. Uh, like I said, before I was even a, you know, dispatching, I'm paying attention to everything going on around me. I'm, I'm looking at DAT trend lines. I'm watching to see what the uh, national averages are. I'm watching the hot market maps. I'm, I'm looking at fuel pricing. I studied that and I feel like that was one of my key uh, success pieces, even as an owner operator. That, that was one of my key success pieces because even as an owner operator, I dispatched myself. Um, I studied. Even once I finished driving, I was looking at the low board. I was looking at the hot market maps. Mm-hmm. I was studying lanes and seeing which, which lanes pay the highest or, you know, I was looking at all of that. So that's my one piece of advice. Study. Nobody can do the study. That part can't nobody do for you. I can mm-hmm. give you all the information in the world to help you. However, you got to put the work in. You got to do the you got work. To. You got to. Because I think that's really a big thing people say. And, you know, I think a little bit on my background as a teacher. How do you find this information? How do I look for things I don't know? And one of my things I used to tell my um, students was you have to really just start looking. Because, um, you know, I call like YouTube is the rabbit trail for me because I'll start digging, 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 and I could spend all this time. But exposure is really the simplified answer to it. As you're noticing, as you said earlier, fuel prices, that's something, you know, that you can just drive around town. You can get on the apps you mentioned. You could just notice the trends. I mean, it's news. When gas goes up, it gets on the news. You know, when it drops, it becomes news. So those right. things you need to be in current events is another thing I would add as far as how to research because it is true. You don't know what you don't know. But right. if you start seeing trends, and as you said earlier, data is what you want to start collecting. Yes. You have to. You can't just make decisions, especially financial decisions, on intuition because you feel one way, you feel another way. You know, it's, it's not really about feelings when you talk about data and finances. You're looking for trends. You're looking at opportunities that, you know, hmm, I'm seeing, you know, every fall this happens in this part of, you know, the country, I'm kind of connected to that. I I know people that work there or can get me on. Let me start studying and positioning myself to be able to do that. Like I said, you have to think of it long term. You can't just wake up in the morning, decide to do something, go and try to do it, and then, you know, have that unrealistic expectation. Why didn't it just happen? 
You didn't put right. that time in. You, you have to plan it. So um, what is some misconceptions that you're really seeing out there for dispatchers? Other than people feeling like, oh, I take a course and then I'm instantly ready, and that's no shot towards a course, but that's right. just people's learning styles. You know, that's why there's 12 years of former education technically than just one because you have to – build upon previous knowledge and you can't just be, you know, it's not just an instant one time thing. So tell us about some misconceptions you're seeing in the field. Mm, sales. Can I tell y'all one thing? Mm -hmm. And this is from the ex owner operator. I retired last year. Thank God. Oh, wow. I retired last year from uh, driving. I sold my equipment, my company, and I went full time into adding value. I'm gonna say this slow so I can say some more. Some mm. more add value. Mm -hmm. Still, let me tell you all something. Owner operators hate salespeople. <laughs> Why? I because think everybody you, does. <laughs> as soon as, as soon as they they hit submit on the FMCSA website that they're applying for MC, guess what? The phone does not stop ringing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. The moment they apply, the moment they hit submit, the phone is going off the hook. It it the phone rings 30, 40, 50 times a day. So you get caught up, if you're getting hung up on a lot, uh, on owner operators, when you're calling to solicit your services, that's because you're the 50th person that's ha that has called them today. Mm -hmm. Sales. I'm a t I used to hang up on so many people, and it was just always about the sale. I learned something from, uh, what's his name, Shy, um, over at uh, Comeback Champion. Oh, okay. Service add value mm -hmm. the moment you can do something for free is the moment you can do it for a fee mm -hmm. when i started this company i did not have one client not a one but the moment that i found somebody who was willing to trust me with their business was the moment that my business took off mm -hmm. so I, it, but it wasn't about sales it was about a adding value i got that customer just by just by putting information out there Mm -hmm. You know, just by letting them know, hey, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Have you thought about this? Just, just putting out just, just good content, you know, and not asking for a sale, not asking for your business. However, I'm just here to help you. Let, mm -hmm. me, let me share with you what I know. And guess what? The more I begin to share information, the more the business begin to gravitate towards me. Why? Because people like to see the value you can add to their business, that you will be an asset instead of just a dollar. Because most owner operators are gonna be like, oh, I can dispatch my own truck. I don't, I don't need anyone to do that. However, you can't keep up with that back office, dispatch yourself, drive and do all this. Like they are not able to stay organized. And I say that, you know, even as an owner operator, you know, I, I was able to dispatch my trucks very well. However, my back office was crap. <laughs> you know? So just having that back office support system, someone who was able to keep an eye on the market, uh, someone who was able to submit those documents, someone who was able to answer those calls, uh, those sales calls and all that good stuff, add more value, add value. It's not about sales. I, and I'm telling you now, I get so irritated when I see a person ask for a dispatcher and I see a thousand and one uh, flyers. Mm -hmm. that gets under my skin. Why? Because it's like, it's a rat race. Mm -hmm. it, it's set yourself apart. Like, what can you do for me that no one else can do? You know, so sales, 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 sales. That is not the way guys service add value. The sales will come. The sales do and, come. And and, you know, again, that consistency, you have to keep putting it out there. If, your, if your personal circle don't know what it is you're doing, you're kind of lacking in that department. You know, um, your friends, your family should be the first to know. I'm not saying that they're going to be your customers, your clients, but they should know what you're doing because they're around you. That's right. a quick fact check. If people sit there and be like, what do you do? Wow. You know, like when your kids tell you that, that's a humbling experience because it's like you should know what I do because I should be saying it out loud 
not just on paper, not just, you know, to one or two people when I'm trying to sell them, but I should be living what I do, you know, um, because like you said, I'm spending just as much time again, back in that research part, I should be living it. You know, people should be excited for you and a sales thing because I, I grew up in sales. My very first job was a sales job and I've just been through all kinds of sales training, but I do agree with you. It's the service. It's the value people look for. Their right. whole whole thing about business, business 101, is can you help solve a problem? There what it is, is the problem that I'm having? And I exactly. used to be a bell bondsman, and everyone's like, oh, my God, that's a problem. Yes, but, <laughs> you know, it's one of those problems that – Sometimes people say, I don't need that. And, you know, like you were saying, a lot of people off the top may not need it, but it may be something because of their circle of influence. They know someone else who has asked and guess now Let who's me add they're, they're going to recommend. Go ahead. Let me add this to you. They don't, they're unaware that they need it. They, they all need it. Because mm-hmm. guess Definitely. what? I needed a dispatcher. However, I was unaware that I needed help. They're mm-hmm. unaware that they need help. Oh, I got it. No, they, they need your help. But <laughs> you can't, it, you really have to get past the trigger. Mm-hmm. You know, because guess what? As soon as you call, hey, do you, uh, I'm XYZ and I'm with, X, you know, XYZ company. I, I do this. Click. Why? Because you just did the same thing the last 49 people just did. Mm-hmm. You know? And another thing is, that consistency, and I, I keep kind of going back to it because people expect that first time I'm out the gate, I'm eager, excited, I do my pitch, I share my information, I add value, and then I just disappear. No. You know, come back. Try to get, like you said, from that conversation, you're supposed to be getting information too because do they, like you said, they're unaware, they haven't, you know, fully realized what there is to do to know that they know they can't really do it all. Um, Mm -hmm. So give them some time, check back in about a month, check back in six months. I'm not saying call them every day (laughs) because you'll get blocked, (laughs) blocked or deleted that way, but learn from who you're talking to. It's a two way conversation. You know, as you're talking to these carriers, what are their pain points? Because that becomes data. You don't know just thinking of it because your pain points may not be the pain points to the people in which you attract. And I really believe in that too. We attract people, people come into our lives and stuff for a reason and a season. And we got to be conscious about that. Angel, I wanted to ask this other question too, because of the amount or interest in dispatching um, in retrospect, and even that, you know, you're kind of doing it to, you know, now, what do you think, um, do you think it's oversaturated? And again, going back to that value add, what do you think that owners, you know, carriers miss in understanding what a dispatcher does? As a driver, <laughs> I'm just going to be flat out honest. Most drivers look at dispatchers like, man, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. You know? Uh, and, and that's, I mean, even at companies, at major companies, you know, it's like, you know, most of those guys have never been in a truck, you know? So it's like, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. So it's almost like dispatchers start out with a bad name, with a bad mm-hmm. rep. So that's the reason I, I say add value. Let them know that, hey, I can help you with this. And that's the reason we also started with education. Study, 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 study. Because the more you study, the more knowledgeable you become. The more knowledgeable you become, the more of uh, conversation starters you can have. You know, I True. never, I, I ain't gonna say I never, let me knock on some wood. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't call and, well, I haven't made a cold call in a long time. But even when sourcing for direct shippers, I'm gonna drop this gem for free. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop it. I don't ask for anyone. Why? Why don't I ask for anyone? It, it limits it. I, I'm going to wait for the comments and everything, too. Why do you think you're not to ask and clarify the question again? So when you call a shipper, you don't ask for anyone. I don't so, ask for anyone. No. So comments we have. We got people live here. Why do you think she doesn't ask for anyone? I have a 
and I'll kind of take a stab at it. We didn't rehearse this. <laughs> I, take a stab. I think because you're limiting yourself when you ask for that one person. What if that one person was off? What if that one person was fired? <laughs> and it's you, that's, also a trigger point. It's mm, a trigger point. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, let's just say, like, brokers are taught to uh, ask for the tra uh, traffic manager. I don't mm -hmm. ask for the traffic manager. I, because okay. why? The, the gatekeeper is also, he's triggered at that point. He wants to talk to the traffic manager. Oh, he's not available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's true. So, so the owner slash operator. <laughs> he's right. like, what? What script are you reading? <laughs> right. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. those are trigger points. Uh, and that's a psychology thing, you know, so the, the, the way to get around that trigger is X who. Okay. Why? Because we are automatically wired to do what? Want to help. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to help. So, so who, who I'm, can the I denzel, okay. I'm the denzel in distress whenever I call anyone. Mm, okay. Why? Because we are all wired naturally to do what? Mm -hmm. Want to help. So now I just triggered you to do what you're wired to do. Mm -hmm. That's $150 ounce. Y'all can cash out. I, I love it. 1986. I love it. <laughs> I love it, but that's true. You have to use that type of psychology in dealing with people because that's what first and foremost it is. Okay. And then the comment, because you never know who will help you, but if you exactly. position it correctly, they're there exactly. to help. Mm -hmm. And that person that you just asked for may not even be that company anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just really lost a potential customer, a potential client. So, and when cold calling for carriers, you know, I just strike conversation. Learn, their, learn a trucker's language. Learn an owner's language, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing, you know. I'm, hey, man, how you doing? You know, you got anything you need some help with? How you feeling? I know your phone ringing off the hook right now, but just give me a few moments of your time. Let me see where I can help you at. There you, you know, go. I'm always joking or I'm always willing to uplift the situation because half the time, most of those guys, that, especially those that just went active, they're stressed out of their mind. They're stressed. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do next, as we can see in the comments. Mm -hmm. Most of those guys don't know what to do next. So they need help. They just scared to ask. They don't know who to ask. So if you have the information I need, if you're exemplifying or exuding, there you go, you're living. You said that. If you're exuding, I have this knowledge to help, guess what? They're going to call you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do sales. Why? Because you're, you're living the sales. You're adding the value. As you add the value, people see you adding value. Hey, your sales is just, you know. What the, what, I think the Bible says something about um, uh, my gift will make room for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and your gift will make room. Your knowledge will make room. Your knowledge base will... Absolutely. Yeah. will make room for you. It will put you in places. It will allow you to go places that you couldn't get on your own. It Can will I allow add you something to on go. That? And Come it's on not me. what someone calls you. It's what you, like you said, it's your knowledge base. So yeah. having 15 degrees, all these certifications, means all nothing. these things means nothing, you guys. And that was a little hard pill for me to <laughs> for, for me to swallow because I thought that's how you go into it. You know, I was like, oh, I have to study. So I study for a certification. I, I study for a license. I try to do this. I try to do that. Now, my industry is really regulated and I do have to have those certifications and licenses. But when I talk to the people, I bring none of it up. Because what does that have to do with them? The fact that, you know, I'm licensed in 26 states. They're in one. Right. <laughs> you know, and all so they care about like, is how them. can you help me? Right. How can you help them? So I think another thing you, you mentioned, too, is with the service aspect, service comes from that place of it's not about me. I don't want you to hear my spiel, my qualifications, my business, what I need. But how can I help you? Right. And it comes. And I'll tell you now, you know, commonly in insurance, uh, they teach you how to go buy leads, do internet, you know, things, and you're, you're getting a bunch of random and stuff. And they're not really focused on building rapport, those conversations to make you stick. Because, yeah, there's key things that they teach you to say that, you know, prompts, prompts the ears. It's like, oh, you said something about savings, about this, about that. But it's not until you dive into that conversation do you really see where the need is and right. how you can fit the need. So... You guys just starting out, don't be discouraged. Don't be overwhelmed and saying, I have yet 
to do this and that. You be transparent and tell them, I am learning in this process, but what I just learned is that, you know, this particular commodity is hot right now, and I feel really confident, and I've been following, studying. You know, you share that information with that uh, owner-operator, and that might have not been something they knew or something they've been waiting to hear more about. So that might be a way to, again, open that conversation up. Um, tell us a little more, more about the trucker's assistant. I'm spitting. I'm <laughs> sorry. Trucker's assistant, the services you offer, and um, mentorship and training programs you have available. Well, that's what uh, I'm currently putting together now as far as a mentorship. Like, I'm, I, I mentor all of my carriers. Uh, majority of my carriers are owner-operators with one or two trucks or um, – you know, and, and majority of them are new owner operators. So many times I'm not just making sure they're moving their trucks. I'm mentoring them as well. However, I know that, you know, that's not common because it's very rare to find someone who, you know, has the experience that I have in this industry. Mm -hmm. So and to be able to work closely with them for a reasonable rate. <laughs> my rates are really uh, reasonable uh, seeing the amount of experience and knowledge that I have. So that's the, that's one of the benefits, you know, not only am I uh, taking care of keeping your trucks moving profitably or strategically positioning your equipment. I'm also uh, making sure um, your back office, your numbers make sense. Like I help guys with their cost of operation. I, I have a whole spreadsheet that automatically calculates, the um cost of operation like mm -hmm. i can tell you what your daily cost is your weekly cost your yearly cost your day uh your annual per mile cost of operation you can get this spreadsheet on my website www.thetruckerassistant.com right now it is on sale uh for i think it's what 25 dollars. it's on sale right now i think uh but that sale will be ending soon um I'm also working on doing some dispatch classes. I was really hesitant about doing it because I just really don't have the time. Uh, but I do have a partner who, who said that they would come in with me and cover the first, first half. Uh, because really, I have a book, but I haven't released it yet. I have a book that pretty much shows you basic dispatching, you know, mm -hmm. terminology, um, uh, hours of service, all that stuff. All of that is in my book. So I didn't want to go through basic dispatching. However, the more advanced stuff, the, the hot markets, the strategy, strategic positioning, uh, framework, mental framework, all of that is more advanced stuff. Because a lot of times in a basic class, you can't really do the mental framework, you know, or, you know, things of that nature in basic dispatching. Like I couldn't put that in the book, mm -hmm. you know, because it's more in depth you know, at understanding the preferences, the restrictions, because a lot of people think that, oh, well, um, just because this lane is running at this rate, that's what we're going to do. No, it really all depends on carrier pre preferences. It depends on carrier restrictions. And a lot of people don't even understand that they have restrictions on their company. Um, one, of, one restriction is not having a trailer, running power only. People mm -hmm. think, and, and it's a lot of people getting into business saying that, oh, that's what I'm going to do, run power only. You're limiting yourself. That's only a, a, a part-time solution, you know, a limited solution. Like, don't depend on running power only, especially having your own authority. Now, if that's something that you want to do, I would definitely suggest not getting your own authority uh, if that's something you're looking to do long term. But if it's just a bypass, I'm just going to bypass being power only for a moment, then cool. But your insurance most of the time, your first year in business, your insur insurance is sky high. Uh, I think you and I. Unfortunately, going. it's going to be like, like your first three years now, more now, because all these failure rates adversely, you know, um, show insurance companies, you know, when people is ju just starting out, they're bombing, they're bombing. And so um, Robin is asking, again, the email address. Uh, I think you just gave the website. It should be on the website. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, www.thetruckerassistant.com. Uh, the spreadsheet is there. Um, and I have multiple spreadsheets, though. It's I have a I think someone was asking about the uh, how do they keep how to how to keep up with, you know, tracking. I have a tracking spreadsheet, very comprehensive spreadsheet 
Um, can I share my screen on here? Sure. Give me a second. Let me see if I can. And I'm just going to share it briefly. I'm not going to. Uh... Yeah. When I kind of hover, it's the little button next to the heads. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. <laughs> but the spreadsheet offers data, like being able to keep up with your uh, your carrier's information, what they're running, what area, what lanes they're doing well in, and all that stuff. Like we don't see it. If you, are you sharing it? Not yet. Oh, okay. Kinda, Just make sure. <laughs> Yeah, make sure. Uh... I was um, again on the insurance back back side of it uh, while you're getting the spreadsheet. It is important because again, your carriers are just going to be looking at you like make me money, but you have to know what that means other than just you know. A, a dollar per dollar and I didn't realize again I'm networking more with you know owner operators different um, parts of our industry and I'm hearing how cargo <laughs> is just mistreated how you know way stations people are off weight because how trailers are loaded and how that went back to you know what the shipper did and right. people are not even aware of their rights of how to you know negotiate talk to all those other things of the shipper but that even though i guess does it fall more on the carrier or on that first initial contact so is the broker supposed to have disclosed that where does that communication break down do you think where is that what is that with the um let's say uh um uh warehouse miss um misloading you know kind of causing your load to be unevenly that's on the carrier, balanced and that's that's on on the carrier. carrier. yes okay so and that's that's the conversation too that i have i'm sorry y'all i just moved my camera uh that's another conversation that i have with my carriers uh matter of fact just had it the other day um take pictures. those tickets fall on the driver right yes okay the carrier the too. and the take carrier pictures. too take pictures um of the freight when you load it, take pictures. Take pictures. Have your drivers to take pictures of the freight, how it's loaded. If it and if it's loaded wrong, if you can, if if the driver can spot a potential hazard, say something. If they're not willing, I I've literally as an operator, I've told a driver, I told guys, look, I'm not leaving with this. Mm -hmm. No, because it's loaded wrong. How how this is gonna fall over as soon as I pull off. Mm -hmm. You know, take photos. And if the broker says roll with it, okay, but give it to me in writing. I get everything in writing. It's called CYA. <laughs> Can't tell you what A stands for, but CYA, <laughs> I always cover yourself. Um, yeah. Everything in writing. When I'm talking to brokers, if a broker guarantees me something, I want it in writing. Mm -hmm. I don't take your, no, this is business. I don't take nobody's word for anything. Give me something in writing. Well, I can just send it to you. And when it comes down to uh, certain things, um, delivery times and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff you want to get in the rate confirmation because I've had a guy to come back and say, Oh, well, we just got to follow what's in the rate confirmation. Totally disregarded what was in the email, mm. you know? So just get everything in writing and in always, writing. always, always, always be professional. I don't care Absolutely. what the other person is doing. Always be professional. And I'm All right, you guys, we, really quick. go ahead, share the screen. And please ask questions if this is, you know, sparking some questions, of course, want to, um, you know, uh, encourage the follow up directly with Angel. But just, you know, if there's some questions you want to ask right now for the room as she's getting the spreadsheet. OK, I, we see it. All right. Please make sure you're doing it. So this is That's like nice. a mock. <laughs> <of what? laughs> Thank you. This is a mock of what the spreadsheet looks like. It's not my actual, but this is just for, um, you know, just for showing. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, I'm going to put in today's date. Well, a date, it don't matter what it is. Truck number. Uh, all right, so what's my origin? I'm going to go here and say Memphis again, Tennessee. What am I doing? When this right here changes color, colors 
that's telling me that it's in a different, a certain lane. That's in a time zone. That's a different, that's a different mm -hmm. zone. Every time it changes wow. color, I know what my, what my carry is running. Let's say he's going to Texas, Dallas. I'm sorry. That's a lane from zone to zone. See this? It's all set up for, with every zone. Wow. All right. So my empty miles, let's say I didn't have, let's say I had um, 150 empty miles. Don't turn yellow. Why? Because that's my top. I don't want to go over 150. That's what, at least that's what I try to get my drivers to uh, understand. I try to keep everything below 150 miles deadhead. Let's say I got 222. It turns red on me. So this is all data. Uh, loaded miles, uh, 521. And it paid 1500. So now I got my gross rate per mile. If it's factoring, I got what it's going to cost me for my factoring rate, truly depending on what that factoring rate is. All miles, rate per mile on all miles after factoring, you know. Then I got BOL. Was my BOL submitted? This helps me to keep up with if I submitted BOLs or not. Yes or no, you know. Who was my customer? What was that low number? All my notes. So then when we come back over here to the dashboard, guess what? Now I got first quarter, truck number one, he grows 6,500. So just the data in this particular spreadsheet alone, just it, it, it's, it's un, you know, it's, you can't really compare it. And it keeps mm -hmm. up with everything, your miles, empty miles, gross, net, all of that. So that's enough of that. That's though. awesome. Having a dashboard, um, you know, that's that yeah. next level right there. You're not just getting a spreadsheet where you're going to have to know where to look for the information, but at a glance, because that's when decisions are made is, you know, you're, you're having to decide right then and there before that load disappears or someone's calling you, offering you something, and you're going to have to make you know, even if you need to buy more time and say and send something over, let's talk about it. But you're going to more or less have a just very short amount of time in which to decide is this going to be a go or not. And you right. want to definitely plan in advance. You don't want to be planning the day of, you know, that's your backup plan. Um, right. But yeah, you want to move forward with it. Um, I show saw, you one more tool. Let me show ahead. you one more tool real quick. And Tina, now, um, I responded topic. as well. This one is a bit costly. Uh, however, it's a ton of benefits. All right. Rate view. When I tell you guys this is, you can't compare this because now I just changed the game now because I have negotiating power. It's worth every. And this every is a penny. subscription, correct? It is. It's worth every penny. Okay. So this keeps me from leaving money on the table. Every time I book a load, I'm tracking everything. Everything, literally. Look at this. The load truck ratio in Memphis is right, one, one, 11 to 1. In Boston, it's two to, uh, 2.6. So that lets me know that there's not a whole lot of freight in this area, right? And this is what I, this is what I'll be doing in the advance, you know, because this takes, mm -hmm. you know, it takes time. You have to learn this stuff. At the same time, I can tell you what rates have looked like over the last 12 months. Historically. Mm -hmm. So when you set up, get set up with those cheap, you know, low boards, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. I'm just being honest. Um, mm -hmm. When they say go with the, you know, more reasonable one. You're, you're shooting yourself. So I pay top dollar for all the analytics uh, and information I can have to just help my operation because that's, all, that's really all it is. When you have resources and tools, that's to serve you. That's to help mm -hmm. your job be easier. So 
a lot of people ask, Angel, is it worth paying three hundred and some dollars for a low board subscription? Absolutely. I make that back in in a day. In a few months. If you're using it right. If you're using it right. There, exactly. There it is. You I mean, but the having the resources and the tools, I just can't express it enough. That that does the job. But you for guys you. I hope everyone listening and you know, again, depending on your phase of where you are as a dispatcher. This is your, I don't want to say you're the competition. You're not the enemy because it's about collaboration, but you got to listen to the value in which she brings to her clients. And, you know, the more she's out there, the more we're sharing, you know, the things that she's doing, all of us have to step our game up. You know, people come oh, to insurance. Do Look, yes, and this is true. <laughs> this is true. Well, the you know industry what? has to step the game up. You know, we can't true. have where, where people aren't making money off the loads. We can't have where people are being cheated and not aware and they're taking stuff that they're actually paying to go do. You know, you're not getting paid, but you're you're in the hole from as soon as you accepted it. It it all comes back to insurance too, you know. Um all this all this is statistical all of it like like we said earlier the data is not based on feelings intuition <laughs> there's as you've seen historic ad historical data that tells you and a lot of it when you think about it makes sense you know crops come in a certain time of year you're not going to have crops in the winter you know of all things so you want to get aligned with what your carriers can do and you need to know what your carriers true capacities are you know it's not just on there one day and the the spin and the, of the draw and luck it takes planning it takes this education this level service if you're not bringing it to this level you're doing a disservice at that time so you have to have to just right. keep going and not expecting everyone to leap out the door because she's got the experience, but connect with people such as angels so you can now be on the right track instead of spinning your wheels. Um, right. What would be some closing comments for you, Angel, about just what does the industry need right now? What, what are you feeling in the future? I, I love Unity. when people can talk about that. Unity. Because right now, here's the thing. Uh, with there being so many dispatchers, everybody, okay, I can't say that. Let me back up. Unity. So this is not a competition. I'm not here to compete. If I, if I was here to compete, I wouldn't have showed you my resources. <laughs> true, true. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be offering them. I mean, I'm, I'm selling them, I'm, and I'm selling them for pennies on a dollar, or I wouldn't have showed you that, hey, I have access to uh, rate view, and this is, you know, that's, Believe it or not, that is one of the greatest resources. Also, uh, and it's all, and it's one of the number one resources is understanding cost of operation. Why is that so important? Because right now the market is in a good place, but let's just say the market tanks again, like it did back last year. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, you had carriers like really competing to the bottom. Broker says the local pays a dollar a mile a year ago. You got brokers. I mean, carriers out there fighting for that. No, stop it. Don't compete to the bottom. I love it when a broker tells me, oh, well, I got a guy on the other end said that he's willing to do it for two, three hundred dollars less than I am. OK, sure. <laughs> Let him do it. It. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a race to the bottom, you know, uh, the moment that carriers and dispatchers are on one accord, that's the reason I say it's not a competition. Because if Coca-Cola and Pepsi can put their stuff on the same aisle, you got uh, uh, BK, you got all of these brands on the same aisle, and nobody has undercut anyone. You got all your off brands, but guess what? All of your off brands are still right there in the same, same, uh, in the same bracket. So, of course, I charge what I charge for my services. You charge what you charge for your services. Uh, but now people see that angel adds value. So now it's like, okay, I do have to step my game up. However, it's not a competition. Why? Because I am willing to help. I am willing to give, you know, the resources that you need. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's enough money out here for all of us to eat. Is it oversaturated? No, it's not. Because guess what? I can't dispatch everyone on my own. That's the reason I just hired right. assistants. I just hired two assistants. You know why? Because I'm, I got a ton of people coming in. Hey, angel, I need you. I need you. I need you. So now, some of my carriers saying, hey, Angel, I don't want to work with no one else. I was like, look, dude, <laughs> I'm training these people, so they're going to have the framework that I have. 
because of why I'm giving them the framework. I'm giving them the way that I process stuff during the mentorship, during the coaching. So as far as stop competing, this is not a competition. If, if one person in the group says that I'll dispatch you for 3%, they can have it. I wouldn't touch a truck for 3%. You know, it's a race to the bottom. If there's a broker offering a load that's got a thousand miles on it and it's paying a thousand dollars, go ahead and knock yourself out. I don't care what what position the market is in. That's the reason I said unity. So there needs to be some form of structure, pricing structure. You know, once the once the market shifts and rates aren't as they are right now, then what's the plan? You have to change the you have to not necessarily change the rules, but you have to change your approach. So at that point, am I using what the rates are in the market? No, I don't care. I, I don't care what the market is doing right now. Oh, where the mark, the lane is paying a dollar sixty a mile, and you just quoted me at two dollars. I don't care what the market is paying because guess what? You was able to pay me two thousand to do it last week. Why would I take it for less this week? You know, my driver's cost of operation is at a dollar sixty. Why would I run your load at a dollar sixty? All my driver did was broke even. So if that's what if but without unity, that's what we have to do. So that's the reason. That's one of the reasons for understanding cost of operation during this climate, because until there's a unity of mind and instead of competition, a level of cooperation. That's that's I stand for that. I would rather cooperate with you than compete with you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, here's the thing. You have to be able to collab with people who have the same mindset as you because people will rub elbows with you and make you think that, oh, we're here to do this and do that. But all along, it's just let me get what I can get and go on by my business. However, you know, it, the truth will spill over. Definitely. Energy speaks. Mm -hmm. Intuition will speak. All you got to people will tell you their motives as long as you sit back and listen. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Become a sponge. So closing, it's about cooperation, not co uh, competition. It's about Amen. unity. And the moment that carriers can unify as one. Why? Because here's what happens. You have over owner operators with less than six trucks make up about 90% of the industry. Mm -hmm. So they're controlling the market. Okay, let's walk through this. If over 90% of these companies are controlled by carriers with less than six trucks. That's the reason the market fluctuates so much. Why? Because it's almost difficult or impossible to get everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? I use a dispatcher. Centralized dispatching. If every dispatcher is on the same page and has the proper framework, come on now, you see where I'm going. If I can help you understand the, the necessary steps or the necessary framework, what did I do? I just created a better industry. I just created a better market. So now that's just like Jordan's. If who put who who makes the pricing for everything? Consumers, right? So if a consumer goes out and spends $200 on a pair of Jordans, you just price you just price those Jordans. Let it sit on let it sit on the shelf for about a, a, a month. Let it not make any sales. Let it not move. I get excited about this type of stuff. If the product does not move, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to lower the price. If the freight does not move, guess what I'm going to do? I got to jack the price up. I have to raise the price because it's not moving. I don't make money with my freight sitting on docks. So it's imperative that we understand it's not about competition because guess what? You'll be out of business in a few moments. Why? Because you don't understand your cost of operation. If you just took that load for a dollar a mile, you don't understand this. Your cost of operation is at $1.60. You're going to put yourself out of business. Why? Because you can't keep up. So sure, race to the bottom. That's the reason I don't, I don't compete at all. If you got a driver willing to take it for less, sure, by all means. I give you six months. Keep on doing that. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the moment that we understand that this is about cooperation and not comp competition, if I can help you understand this market, what did I just do? I just created a, a, a more uh, conducive environment for all of us to make money. And it's not about me making money. It's not about the dispatcher making money. It's about the carrier making money. And the more money I can help you make, the more money I can, I can make myself. I'm always service. It's always about service with me. I don't really care about the rest of it because as long as I do what I'm supposed to do, the money's going to come. Definitely. You got to do what you're supposed to do. Right. Absolutely. I focus on money. 
Cooperate. Absolutely. Not, it's not a competition. Cooperate. Collaborate. Collaborate. Reach out, you guys. So um, the email, again, it's um, the, everyone's asking for your, your contact information. And she's okay. also going to put that um, in, in the... Um, in the comments in the video and everything too but if you'll verbally give it to them if someone's got all right everyone should have their pen and paper out but <laughs> share the contact information one more time uh www.dtruckerassistant without an s dtruckerassistant.com um go to uh shop and you will see the spreadsheet there like i said it is currently on sale for i think 25 dollars um and a lot of people have been contacting me saying hey angel uh, it's not working. It won't let me check out. A lot of times, I don't know if it's still doing it, but with cell phones, it wasn't allow, It wasn't allowing people to check out. So you, it, it, they were having to purchase from a tablet or either a desktop. Good, good feedback there. So again, use your tablets, your desktops to make the purchase. Well, thank you so much. Um, she's very active in the community, you guys. Reach out to her, reach out to her. You see she's a wealth of information, heart of gold. Just reach out to her so we can build this unity. That's really the purpose. That's my vision for the group. It's for us to get authentic you know, people and content, not recycled content, not stuff we can find again and someone else found it first and just trying to resell it and rehash it. But this comes from the heart. And if you guys couldn't see that during this time, um, you need to clean your glasses. <laughs> but, you know, uh, this came from the heart. Thank you again for your, um, for your, just for being you. I mean, just for this information, like you said, it is a very rare thing to find someone in your position, your experience, to have that heart to give back. So you guys, you know, we have to really support that. I mean, I, I really have no other words for it. You have to support when there's gyms like uh, Angel around us because, you know, unfortunately, they don't last long. And so we want you to be around. We want you to be around and we got to support you as well. So, can all right. Look, <laughs> Go ahead. Can I pour into you real quick? Yeah, sure. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. When I tell you, you inspire me. I, you, you're you like an octopus with multiple <laughs> arms. I see you all over the place. Like you, and, and let me tell you something. Your time is coming. Trust the process. Trust the process. It has to work. Why? Because you're doing the work. There's a door with your name on it. I didn't say a window. I said a door. Matter of fact, it's mm. a couple of doors with your name on it. Thank Trust you. the process. You are an amazing person. You have a great spirit. Thank you have you. a great spirit. And I love it. I've never seen someone so genuinely want to help so many people. You know, God bless you. I love it. I love it. And I'm so <laughs> make me excited cry. <laughs> to be just able to reach out and touch someone like you. Just to be able to reach out because your spirit is so authentic your spirit is so true it's so it's it's in, it seems like you your name speaks for itself <laughs> the love you feel it you, and everything you do i can tell that there's love attached to it thank you thank you for doing the work thank you thank for you. connecting us thank you oh <laughs> look she's gonna make me cry so i'm about to go but you guys stay connected we have um more people joining us later this afternoon. If you are watching the replay, let us know. Like you said, we're collecting data. We're trying to make sure this works for as many people as possible. This needs to get out. This needs to get out. Don't start. <laughs> Look, she's got to cry for real. I cried a heartbeat. But, to cry. Um, to me, uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> she was just, just playing. But no, I'm 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 a sensitive spirit and, and such. And my, my biggest thing and what's God's been working with me for the past. I would say three years is just to make sure I don't shut down because I'll do that in a minute. I'll just kind of be thinking to myself and I'm like, I don't want to share anything to them. And it, I hold it in. And ironically, my whole thing as a, as a professional when I worked in, um, in the school system was to help kids tell their stories. I was a writing teacher. And I just, I found the irony in that, you know, it was just like, I'm not practicing when I'm preaching. Okay, God, I, I see you. And so even now, and even as I tell people, I'm not a camera person, I just get there and I just, just keep it, keep putting it out there and ugly or, or not just do it, just do it, just keep going. And that's really just been what's motivating me and everything. And I push, I push hard because I see things, you know, um, 
I have that spirit to see things, the greatness in others, and I push. And some people like it, some people don't, but that's that's my gift. I, I push, I will bother the mess out of you. <laughs> and so now I'm trying to do it for myself, to push myself, just be out there, share the good news, and just make sure everyone's connected to, you know, who they need to be. You know, just well, being you. You're amazing. So, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you for Go that, ahead, too. That, that's so no. sweet. <laughs> no, look, All right, it's, it's the truth, though. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for All right, you me. guys. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. And thanks for everyone for joining us as well. Like I said, stay tuned, stay connected, and please be sure to ask questions in Angel if you'll make sure you have the contact, um, content information, you know, your website is on there just for those who um, are catching us late. All right, you guys, I'm going to close the room and we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Bye.